You're watching TVC News at 7. Let's bring in Bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Sokoto State, Matthew Kuka. He joins us now for discussions on Nigeria's journey since independence. Bishop Kuka, what in your opinion were the dreams of our leaders at independence? Do you think that their goals and aspirations have been achieved 60 years after? Well, thank you very much. I'm happy independence once again. First of all, I'm the Bishop of the Diocese of Sokoto, not Sokoto State, and Sokoto Diocese is four states, KB, Zamfara, and Katsina. So, uh, but after that clarification, I believe that we are our founding fathers to wake up and to look at uh, the situation we are in in Nigeria. I think that they themselves will feel very, 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 very sad, saddened by the fact that um, the goalpost they set for us um, almost with our own hands, we managed to pull the down. Uh, beginning from the tragic military of 1966, you know, we began to go downhill in terms of imbibing the values of, um, you know, creating a modern state. Uh, the kind of bureaucracy that we had in the, you know, at the beginning of, uh, uh, you know, after our independence, the kind of military we had, literally all institutions, and so we were literally all set you know, to take our place in the Committee of Nations. But I think that even we ourselves, as Nigerians, must be very, very realistic and know that we really have not attained the, goal, the goals that we set for ourselves, not to talk of the ones, the very lofty goals. Bishop Kuka, 60 years ago, we had come together across ethnic and religious divide with independence on our mind. What, in your opinion, are those factors that seem to have now amplified ethnicity and religion over the years? Very simple. First of all, I think you, over, you are reading too much into the text when you say we came together because we have never come together to discuss the issues of our nation. I mean, beginning from 1914, right through 1922, 1951, 1954, uh, you know, 63, right up to 19, what we now call the 1999 constitution. Uh, it was largely, largely, to a great extent, a work in manufactured consent. Uh, our constitution lays lofty, lofty claims with we, the people of Nigeria. But the truth of the matter, and this is really at the heart of what Nigerians have been, for want of a better word, calling restructuring, you know, that the voices of Nigerians have really hardly ever been in what we call the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And it is the absence of those voices that accounts for the volatility that we see and continue to experience in the system. You know, so I think the point to make, uh, quite frankly, is that they haven't had the courage and the political leaders have always tended to take us for granted because, you know, we haven't come to terms with voices that are slightly contrary to what is popular. Um, the only freedoms that those in power give to us successively has always been freedoms to agree with them. Um, and a country that claims to be a democracy must have in its heart, you know, a robust place to be able to accommodate. But I'm wondering opinion. what this conversation you're referring to is. In 2014, we had a national confab uh, that brought stakeholders across the country. As we speak, there's a national assembly that represents the majority of different groups in Nigeria. Uh, on what platform are you suggesting this conversation? Well, I mean, first of all, on... on, on I'm not, you know, if you're talking about what we have now, I think that if you talk to members of the National Assembly, we have, we, you know, we have a structure in place. The legitimacy of the structures we have in place is clearly under question. I was Secretary of the Political Reform Conference in 2005. Uh, so we're not short of ideas and ideas. The, the critical question is to operationalize these ideas and put them into practice. I mean, I think that what is required is the political reflexes the right reflections of the government to say, okay, we've had all these initiatives. The system is still, is still malfunctioning. What do we need to do? And all of us don't necessarily have to come together. We've probably gone past that point. But we can at least save on the short term to say, look, the report of the 20, 2014, 2005, and other initiatives, can we have a committee sit down and look at all this? Because, you know, we have power sharing mechanisms that are not working. We have a system that very, very clearly is not uh, you know designed in a way a manner that can meet the maximum benefits of the maximum number of people that are living in this country so 
it's clear. Everybody complains about the, the, the overbearing powers at the center. Um, uh, and we've entrusted so much to the center. And the center is not showing the reflexes that it needs to harmonize you know, these various uh, interest groups Bishop Kuka, very so, quickly, let us break down those challenges a little bit. Um, insecurity, for instance, has raised, uh, reared its ugly head uh, in the recent past. The president, in his address earlier today, emphasized the need to now increase our collective commitment to peaceful coexistence in a peaceful, secure, and united Nigeria. I want to talk about what important stakeholders like yourself, religious leaders, and traditional rulers have done in the past years. Uh, you people have the ears of the people. Do you think that you have done enough uh, to keep us as peaceful as we should be? Well, I don't, I think you are assigning me a role I don't, I, I don't, I don't possess. You are assigning the, tra the traditional rulers a role. I mentioned religious leader and traditional well, leaders. You talk about religious leaders. I wasn't elected by the people of Nigeria to solve Nigeria's problems. We are in a democracy. And we cannot continue to outsource our responsibilities. When things go back, everybody turns back to religious leader. I'm a non-state actor. I don't have a police force. I don't have a budget. The point is that elect, you know, democracy is about people transferring their responsibilities, their hopes, their dreams, and their visions to others. Who stepped forward? Nobody was pulled out of their room. Everybody who is holding office today came out and beg the people of Nigeria to vote for them because they could solve our problems. So the critical question is not so much a question of what religious leaders can do. I'm a common citizen, just like everybody else. I'm speaking specifically, Bishop Kuka, to the issue of insecurity. Are you saying that religious leaders have no role to play? The, the religious leaders don't, we, let's be clear, we don't run the army. Okay, you might ask me to pray, and of course, you don't need to ask me to pray because I'm praying for the country. But prayer is not going to wish away Boko Haram. So the point I'm making is that it, it, we have the tendency to outsource these obligations or these difficulties to parties that don't have the capacity. So the fact of the matter is that this country has an army. This country has an armed force. And this country, the, the military has the monopoly of violence on our behalf. That is the system we have adopted. The question is, how do, and if you go back to what this president said during the campaigns about the, their commitment to resolving the problems of Boko Haram, you know, where we are now is not where we ought to be. And one of the things I felt a bit worried about in reading the speech is that I don't hear, I just hear an acknowledgement about the state of our insecurity, but I don't have a sense that after 60 years of independence, there is a futuristic plan to ensure that this country becomes safe and secure for its citizens. And for me, this is one of the things that I expected to see, because I'm not expecting soldiers, politicians to be lamenting like the rest of us are lamenting. We're not in a situation of helplessness. Heavy budgets have been made for security. We still, we are now at a point in which security itself has become an industry. We are coming nowhere close to, uh, 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 as I say, the goalposts we set for ourselves and the claims we make about keeping this country secure. And that is what, that constitutionally, that is what every president swears to. You know, so I think that we need to see very clearly an aggressive plan to end this crisis that has engulfed our nation. Otherwise, I mean, we really don't, it will be difficult for us to talk about the future. Bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Sokoto, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka, happy Independence Day and thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.